Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And listen, <clears throat> we do have the breaking news is coming out of Baghdad, out of Iraq, in the green zone. And there have been seven rockets that have been fired into the green zone, targeting what appears to be, of course, the U.S. Embassy in this region of the world. If you remember, we discussed with you guys back in October about a false flag event. Those of you that have uh, our Patreon channel got to see a little bit more details on this event. I'm going to play a clip of this for you here because I didn't put everything out on Israeli News Live on YouTube because of the sensitivity of the subject here. And at the time the intel that I had received this intel, it was looking like that this false flag event would be done before the election itself. Uh, but it hasn't happened. And of course, as I reported last night, uh, we also were sharing with you on iConnectFX.com as well as we posted it on um, uh, brand new tube, Israeli News Live, other places like that. We would posted how that uh, there was level four intel working to keep Trump in office. Now, I could not help but wonder if that level four intel is not looking, because level four intel happens to be Pentagon intelligence, uh, is not looking for an avenue to get a war kicked off with Iran. Now, that's just my take on it. I could be wrong on that, but the info, info that I had gotten on intelligence overseas uh, that came in this here saying uh, Turks have moved some of al-Nusra fighters to the Caucasus and started their, well, you know what, there, uh, which that was the beheading of Christians there. Uh, but it goes in, a devious red flag is in the offering. A Trump is behind a CIA, FBI, are pissed, pardon the expression, Apparently, even Mossad said no. So the contract has gone to privates uh, and Jordan and Saudis and others in the Gulf are not competent enough to pull it off and Egypt was not chosen. I guess everybody is scared if it won't work and then they have to face the Democrats in an unleashed Iran. Bibi and Trump have a really bad relationship right now because Bibi thought of him as an idiot and liked him a couple of times and Trump is not happy. This is her Jared's position also. So we get into all of this information here because, uh, and of course we find out that the Mahadeen and the al were initially approached by the administration for this. That doesn't mean that Trump's doing it, but someone in that Trump camp there uh, through the intelligence uh, communications there were working to bring about a false flag event. What is happening now in Iraq, I don't think this is going to be the false flag, but it's gearing it up. This is going on to the bottom of the letter, but it would make sense for Trump wanting to turn the election on its head by blaming Iran for the act and declaring a war and becoming a wartime president and consequently re-elected. Now, as I said to you, this the, the situation did not happen before the election. The thing is, is that uh, it didn't happen before the election. It came after the election, and we've already seen uh, Trump not willing to concede the election, and uh, and then of course, then we end up with uh, this. This of course, let me jump over here. This was the rocket attack itself. Some of the footage being shown on that, I kind of show you there there in Iraq there to uh, this evening. Seven rockets, by the way, were launched uh, at the green zone seemingly to target the U.S. Embassy inside the Green Zone. Uh, Trump furious over this and blaming the Iraqi government not to do more to, uh, to put a stop to the group that's actually doing this. So thus far, it's fallen short of accusing Iran at this point, at least that I can find thus far. But nonetheless, the U.S. Embassy in Iraq did get hit by a rocket attack, and it broke a month-long truce, and one person was killed as a response. as a girl that was actually killed. Um, now, it doesn't say who the girl is, if she was an Iraqi uh, citizen, national, or if she was U.S. citizen. But it does go on here. It says, a volley of rockets slammed to the Iraqi capital in Baghdad late Tuesday, killing one girl and breaking a month-long truce on attacks against U.S. Embassy. The violence came as Washington announced a historic cut in troop numbers in Iraq and Afghanistan. According to the Iraqi military, four of the rockets landed in the eight uh, high-security uh, high green zone where the U.S. Embassy and other foreign missions are based. Another three rockets also hit parts of Baghdad, killing one girl and wounding four, uh, five civilians. 
that kind of lets us know she was definitely more than likely not an American, the girl that was actually killed. Now, keep it in mind, this has happened once before. Uh, and here's the clip of where they talk about uh, the U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump bringing down troop numbers just before this attack. So interesting, isn't it? The president bringing down those troop numbers. How many times have we seen this over and over and over through the course of his four years in office? Every time he goes to bring down troop numbers overseas, some type of it always ends up happening. Now, my intel from, um, well, I won't say where it's from, uh, different intel as well, also suggesting, and it's something that I believe early on as well, that the false flag will actually be on an American ship in the Persian Gulf region there. Uh, this would give them really the ability to blame Iran and to go after Iran with, as I was told, tactical nukes would be used against an, a war with Iran, which would only further, de further destabilize the Earth itself. It's already going through a tremendous amount of seismic uh, activity. So at any rate, I, I don't know if I'm quite willing to say that this is that false flag event as of yet, but I do find it interesting that this attack has occurred, especially in light of the fact that we've already reported this back not only in October, but even yesterday. We brought this report up again. In fact, actually yesterday, let me kind of go to this here on YouTube. Um, where we had spoke about this. This was actually not on Fax News, uh, not on Fact News Network, because on Israeli News Live, but of course, that's one that you have to switch over to iConnect to be able to see it. Uh, and that was, oh gosh, was it this? Oh, wait a minute. Well, sorry, we're still not on Israeli News Live channel there. Uh, and let me stop the sound of that video right there. At any rate, here we go right here. Will China give the U.S. a dark winter? Uh, this video right here. And we went into even more detail about this situation with a false flag in there. Of course, the name of the video, Will China Give the U.S. a Dark Winter? And uh, you can, when you click on the link there, it takes you over there to iConnectFX.com. You can see the remaining part of the video there. And... Uh, uh, but we, again, we were um, going into the video there talking about, let me just see if I can find where I actually speak about this there, about the false flag event because of new intel information that we were getting. So we were, we were in this video here discussing that uh, very real possibility. And let me see if this is right here. There we go. So you have it there. We've been speaking about this already. And now we have this attack there on the green zone. And like I said, only I, I, I really feel that this is not the false flag they're looking for, uh, but it may very well be coming very soon and even bigger. Who knows though, who knows? Can't say that they won't end up reacting on those rockets coming into the green zone and then using that to justify it. But uh, it could be a tit for tat. The U.S. might strike back and then hit Iranian targets, and then Iran may strike back. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. And, and of course, this also comes on the heels, too, after the president was talking about striking. Uh, let's see, where was it at there? The president was actually talking about striking a, here we go, right here, where uh, Tehran, uh, let's see, uh, response follows reports that U.S. President Trump looked into feasibility of hitting the uh, uh, Natanz facility, that's Iran's nuclear facility, and Tehran responded to reports that the incumbent U.S. President Donald Trump requests his advisors to provide him options on the feasibility of attacking Iran's main nuclear site by claiming that such a move would face a crushing response. So will they use Iran's response to him threatening or considering a bombing their nuclear facility as saying, well, this was Iran sending a message. If you mess with us, this is what you're going to get. Who knows? Don't know for sure yet. Hopefully we'll find out soon enough. And hopefully, though, Americans will not be put in harm's way just so that people can get what they want as what they consider to be the greater good, and that's bringing down Iran. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching.